Hi friends, it's Miss Paglaroni and I'm back with another math lesson for you. Today we're going to switch gears a little bit from line plots and we're going to jump into finding perimeter when we know the lengths of all sides. So we're going to start off with a joke. What did area say to perimeter while arguing? I'm trying to talk to you, but I feel like you're just going around my problem. Do you get it? If you don't understand, don't worry, you will soon. So for today, we're going to talk about what is perimeter? We'll do some guided practice problems together, then I'll walk you through your independent practice and your exit ticket. All right, we're jumping right in. What is perimeter? Hopefully this is familiar to you from second grade. Perimeter is the total distance around the outside of a shape. But Ms. Paglarani, how is that different than area? Right, we spent a lot of time earlier this year talking about area. That's a great question. Perimeter is the total distance around the outside of the shape. So we're using the length and the width, but we're trying to find the outside distance around the shape. Area is the amount of space inside of the shape. So you'll see the shaded area. That is what we're looking for when we're trying to find area, the space inside of a shape. Again, we would use the length and the width, but to find the inside space. All right, guided practice problem number one. This problem is cool because it helps us understand how we can use perimeter in real life. So Nora and a few people from her neighborhood are planting a community garden. Below are the designs for the garden. The community wants to fence the garden in. If they, use, if they want to use the least amount of fencing, which garden design should they use? Hmm. Okay, that was kind of a long problem. So I'm going to close my eyes and try to imagine it in my brain. What I'm picturing in my head is a fence. Where does a fence usually go? Hmm, well, it usually goes around a building or someone's house, but it doesn't go inside their house, right? So. I need to make sure that I'm finding the length of the outside edges, right, to find the perimeter. I'm not trying to find what's inside. It seems like the person who made this problem was shading these in to try to trick us into using area, but mm -mm, we're not getting tricked. All right, I'm going to open my drawing tool here so that I have a little bit more space to work with. All right, here's that problem again, same problem. So to find the perimeter, I'm just going to simply add, again, not multiplying, I'm just going to simply add up the lengths of all the sides. And then I'm going to make sure I double check at the end. I have a really easy way to show you of how to double check. So first I'm going to add in a box here so that I can show my work for design A and then I'll copy that box for design B. It's really important when you're doing perimeter to make sure that you show your work. Okay. I like to pick a starting point and then maybe I label that starting point. So let's do a little shape here and then we'll make it so that we can still see through it. Okay, so if I'm going to start at four feet, I'll do four plus, I'm going to go to the right and just go around the shape. Two plus two plus four, whoops, not money, <laughs> and three. All right. I know that because I put the square around this one that I already included that in there. And my way to double check to make sure I didn't forget any of the sides is to count how many sides I have. And that's the number of add-ins that I should have in my addition equation. So one, 
two, three, four, five sides, one, two, three, four, five add-ins or lengths in my addition equation. So now I can go ahead and add these up. Sometimes the numbers are small enough where you can just add them all together in your brain. Sometimes you might need to do a little grouping. So four plus two is six. Six plus two, let me break this down here. Six plus two plus four plus three. Then I can group together again. Six plus two is eight plus four plus three. Just adding those first two numbers every time. Eight plus four is 12 plus three. Whoops. And 15. Woohoo! Awesome. Okay. So far, so good. Let's do design B. Again, I'm going to put a shape around it where I'm starting and that way I know exactly where to stop. I don't add too many numbers. Okay, so I'm looking for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven add-ins this time. This sheep has seven sides. Awesome. Okay, so two plus two plus two plus two plus two plus two plus two, plus two. Make this a little wider here. There we go. Huh, interesting. This one, I noticed that all my add-ins are the same. I have one, two, three, four, five, oops, did I add an extra one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See, this is why it's important to double check, friends. Ms. Peg Lorani even gets tricked. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Awesome. Okay, so I have seven twos here. All my add-ins are the same. Well, I know that repeated addition is the same as multiplication. So if you know two times seven in your brain, you don't even have to do this addition. You could just say, oh, I know two times seven is 14, right? So I know that it's 14, but let's say I didn't know that, right? Let's say I didn't make that connection. That's okay. Two plus two is four plus two is that's four, plus two, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, right? I can just skip count by twos, super easy. All right, so now that I've found my answers, I need to go back and make sure I answered the question. If they want to use the least amount of fencing, which garden design should they use? Which number is less, 15 or 14? Yeah, 14. So design B works better for Nora and her friends. All right, let's go back to my slides. We're gonna try one more problem together. Oops, this should say guided practice number two. We already know what perimeter is. We're becoming experts. Okay, so what is the perimeter of this shape? Remember, we're using addition. We're saving multiplication for when we find area. Okay, let me put a little shape in here just to make sure, whoops. There we go. I know where I'm starting here. All right, so I'll start with six. Six plus three plus four plus eight plus four. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five sides, one, two, three, four, five add-ins. Perfect, I didn't miss a side. Okay, let's add this up. I'm going to try to do it in my head this time. Six plus three is nine. Nine plus four is 13. 13 plus eight is 21, plus four is 25. Maybe I add it backwards too, just to make sure that I got it right. Four plus eight is 12, plus four is 16 plus three is 19, plus six is 25. Awesome, great. Let's jump into the directions for our independent practice. So you're going to go back to today's assignment on Google Classroom. It should be Tuesday, uh, April 28th, 2020, under math. You'll click on independent practice, finding perimeter all sides known. It's actually a Google Doc. Um, so pretty similar to what you were doing before uh, we jumped into Khan Academy. You were doing this last week. 
And then don't forget to scroll down to make sure you've completed all the problems. I've seen some scholars who will um, just complete the first page and they don't realize it's a second page. And then, whoops, and then when you're done, you're going to click turn in in the top right corner. I'll give you a little sneak peek here of what it looks like. So when you're working on it, you can just type your work in on this side. So I said, show your work here. So you'll write your addition equation here and then you'll put your answer down here. Okay, make sure you scroll all the way down and do all the way to number four. Oops. Okay. Now for your exit ticket, you're going to, again, go back to today's assignment on Google Classroom. This is after you do your independent practice. Click on Exit Ticket, Finding Perimeter All Sides Known, and this is a Google Form, okay? It's a little bit different than the Google Doc, but it's uh, something that you've done before. You did it last week. You're going to complete the activities on the page, and you're going to click Submit at the bottom. I've set it so that it will not ad automatically grade your work, this time, um, I know it was doing that before, but it was marking a lot of your correct answers. Oops. It's marking a lot of your correct answers wrong, and I didn't want to, you thinking that you were doing it wrong when you were actually doing it right. So your teachers will check your work, and then we'll let you know how you did. And a note for some scholars that were confused, um, if you click back into the exit ticket after you press submit, you won't be able to see your answers the way that you can when you click back into a Google Doc. It doesn't save your answers so that you can see them, but as soon as you press submit the first time, your answers got sent to your teacher. So even though you can't go back and see your work, don't worry, your teacher does have your answers. So you only have to submit it one time. And just reach out to your teacher if you accidentally make a mistake. Totally okay. I'm going to give you a little preview now just so you know what to look for. So it looks like this, don't forget your name. And then you'll type your answers down here. Click submit at the bottom when you're all done. Okay, one last thing. Let's go back to that joke. What did, the what did Aria say to the perimeter while arguing? I'm trying to talk to you, but I feel like you're just going around or you're avoiding my problem, right? They're making a joke about the words going around because perimeter, or when we're finding perimeter, we go around the outside of the shape. I hope you get the joke. I hope you had fun learning with me today and I'll see you soon, friends.